What is up guys, this is Shiro back with another video on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and today in this video I'm going to be showing you the latest Pixel OS ROM based on Android 12 L of course. This is the 18th July 2022 build so it has been a long time since it has released and yes I have been using this ROM for about a week I guess and I would say this ROM is a really amazing experience but with a lot less customization that you will get from other custom ROMs. Yes, the Project Zephyrus, the Cherry Swiss, all those will be having more customizations than this particular ROM, but this is supposed to give you a pixel kind of experience. If you look at the notes, we have the MIUI camera and stuff included in this ROM, that's just awesome. And yes, I have tested the MIUI camera over here, that's really optimized. I'll talk more about it later. And here we do get the Vantam kernel and stuff as the default kernel. And we of course need the latest MIUI 13 format to actually flash this ROM. So all those things or all the links to actually flash this ROM will be present in the description. And if you're noticing it actually requires a F2FS kind of recovery because F2FS is the default partition over here of the data partition. And again, if you want to flash this particular ROM, again, you can watch the video guide that will actually help you to flash this ROM. Now talking about the home screen, this is how it looks like and I'll show you more of it but let me talk about the about section first and here if you're looking at the about section, this is how it looks. We have the Android version written right there and if you look at this Android version, if you make this clock to this 12 o'clock, surprisingly it does not show you the newer Android 12 L kind of easter egg but yes it's Android 12 L and here we have the July security patch. The stock kernel is Vantam kernel again and here is the build date or the build number. Again 18 July 2022 build and we also get a system updated in the system settings. Let me go back we have the thermal profile so you can change the thermal profiles particularly for each app. You have all these options like the benchmark browser, camera, dialer, gaming etc. So all these things you can change. In the gestures we have the quick tap or this is the back tap you can say and we have the swipe to screenshot. Let me show you that it actually works perfectly fine. We have the share, edit, delete and the capture mode feature and we have the system nav gestures. In the settings of it we have the swipe to invoke assistant that works perfectly fine. No issues with that and if you scroll down we have the gesture indicator and the haptic feedback. No length or the thickness customization for the pill bar over here. Also there is the two button and three button navigation and for the three button navigation we have this invert layout option. Let me go back we have the one handed mode too that should work perfectly fine I guess and as you are noticing it's working fine and we have the quick loop in camera the press and hold power button option and we have the enable advanced reboot then we get the long press power button toggle torch playback control prevent ringing and the double tap to check phone we also get the live translate feature if you want to use that let me go back again this is how the settings panel looks like it looks simplistic and it looks like any other android 12 rom or the stock androidish feeling it gives i would say and here in the home screen again let me show you in the quick setting panel you will still get the dark kind of look over here even in the light theme it gets dark in the quick setting panel but this notification panel stays white in the light theme and swiping up gets to the app drawer and swiping to the left side of the home screen will get you to the google's discover page and the widgets are working fine if you're looking at the animations they are perfectly working fine i would say one more thing let me show you that in the test 2 website you are getting the 120 fps working perfectly fine if you are looking at it it's getting this 120 fps and the refresh it shows as 120 hertz so 120 hertz working right out of the box over here no issues with that and overall the ui actually feels really fast and snappy just because it's running on that f2fs so if you're looking at this data partition it is running at f2fs if you're looking at this with the like dev info app and this is actually making things a lot more faster because of f2fs so the whole ui just feels buttery smooth everywhere once you click on each app it just opens straight up and it works perfectly fine by the way i'm loving the new play store icon if you haven't noticed that and here let me actually show you you can edit and add multiple toggles like the reading mode and stuff then we have other focus mode then we have selfie and stuff so yeah, I have added a lot of toggles over here. Let me show you which ones I have added. The Wi-Fi, mobile data and the Bluetooth toggle is there. By the way, if you're looking at this, you can see a Bluetooth battery percentage over there, like Bluetooth battery bar over here in the status bar. Also in the quick setting panel, if you're looking at this, we can see the Bluetooth battery percentage right there. So that's not a problem. And of course you can switch the device just like this. By the way, this is how the volume panel looks like. It looks beautiful. We can switch the profile from right here. And of course you can expand the volume panel just like this. Also if you want to switch the audio device, this is how you can do it. And it works perfectly fine, no issues whatsoever. You can switch the audio output over here and the animation just looks beautiful once you are tapping on these. So yeah, everything is working fine regarding the Bluetooth volume and stuff. 
and the flashlight option is there then we have the dark theme the auto rotate night light and the hotspot mode always on display you can actually enable or like disable it from right here and we also get the screen recorder we have the device audio and microphone audio recording at the same time with this heads up you can disable from right here we have the do not disturb the data saver the battery saver and the google home controls extra dim feature is there also there is a live display so you can make the display a lot more brighter if you're using like in outdoor condition there is an option for that or else you can just set it to automatic and the anti flicker or disabling is working perfectly fine here by the way in the power menu this is how it looks like and it appears perfectly fine you're getting the android 12 l kind of animation and in the advanced settings you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here and of course you're getting the brightness slider on top you can't really change the position of it over here because this rom does not offer so much customization like those talking about the stock things yes the stock dialer does have a call recording option but you're getting the google dialer and yes vaulty calling and stuff is working perfectly fine here no issues with that also the safety net passes right out of the box over here so if you're worried about using banking apps on this rom you shouldn't be worried because safety net of course passes right out of the box here and the drm info as well stays as l1 so you can stream netflix or amazon prime videos in the netv without any problems also if you're wondering about the ir blaster on this particular rom yes ir blaster is not a problem it's working perfectly fine if you're looking at that light over there it's blinking now in the settings panel you, there are customizations but it's hidden in each settings like there is the network traffic monitor in the network settings the battery settings right here this is how it looks like now i'm kind of disappointed again in the battery settings because i can't really even see the battery temperature over here yes the charging cycles and stuff they are not showing up of course but even the battery temperature i cannot really see that yes that's pretty disappointing for me but the battery life on this rom has been one of the best and yes i have been enjoying the battery life on this rom it has great battery life i'll show you that but there is the battery usage and the battery server if you want to use that or if you want to like have even more battery life out of this rom you can just enable your battery saver and with that battery saver you will get this reduced refresh rate it will switch the display to 60 hertz all the time so that it saves a lot more battery and right now let me talk about the battery life with this aku battery app i have tested and yes with this if you are noticing i have been getting about nine plus hours of screen on time or you can say nine and a half hours of screen on time that's just really huge i would say so you shouldn't be having like any issues you will get nine to ten hours of screen on time with moderate to heavy usage yes i use my device heavily i don't game at all but yes i do a lot of youtube twitter overall the battery life has been really great with my moderate usage that i can pretty much confirm and in the health settings you will get to see the battery health for me the battery health shows as 87 percent which is kind of decent i can say but yes it goes up to like 90 percent i have seen but if you're looking at the charging cycles yes as you are noticing i have charged the device for a couple of cycles and in terms of charging speed it's fine it won't show you the perfect details because I charge like up to 100% all the time so yeah that's why it will feel like a lot more slower like 559 MA average the charging speed has been good enough I can definitely say that and here is how it looks while you are charging the device in the sound settings this is how it looks we have the media call ring etc volume control if you scroll down more we have the dial pad tones the screen locking sound charging sound and stuff and we have the per app volume control too so that's great and we have the vibrate on connect or call waiting and stuff so in call vibrations are there there is a clear speaker option and we also get the me sound enhancer and with this you are also getting the youth edition and stuff and all these headset preset and the sound presets you also get over here so you will get the bass reduction bass booster etc options also there is the smart scene option so you can switch it and we have the enable hi-fi options if you have a really great pair of earphones or wired headset you can definitely use this and there's the haptic feedback customizer you can actually use that so yeah a lot of features regarding sound is there and the sound quality overall has been great jumping into the display settings we have the brightness level customization the adaptive or auto brightness is also there and we have the lock screen customization in here we have this privacy kind of settings and we have the ripple effect even the ambient display you can customize and there is always on and if i go into that again we have this pickup so let me actually show you that it's working perfectly fine and right now if i just pick up the phone it will actually wake up the screen just like this in the always on display looks beautiful i would say it's a really nice feature 
if you don't use always on display all the time you do have this pickup option and there is also the double tap to sleep and we have the screen timeout the dark theme the font size icon manager is there so headset bluetooth etc icons you can enable from right here let me go back we have the night light the live display and from here we have the anti flicker and even the color calibration of the screen you can definitely do those and also in the display mode again there is the outdoor bright sun modes that will make the display really really bright the feature works perfectly fine here and also the colors you can change from right here through saturated or boosted and with the smooth display force 120 hertz refresh rate those work fine of course and the double tap to sleep is there and the double tap to wake high touch polling rate is also there if you want to increase your touch sensitivity even more you can definitely do that or you can definitely enable that from right here also there is a full screen app so you can force some particular apps to full screen if you are willing to in the wallpapers and styles this is how it looks like and yes you can definitely change the basic colors from right here by the way i have been using a wallp app but if you want to change the wallpapers and there are the living universe and stuff so live wallpapers are there you have to download them of course let me go back we have the themed icons and upgrade up to five by five now let's talk about the security settings in here in the settings we don't get the quick unlock over here kind of disappointing i would say but there is the face unlock and fingerprint both so i'm gonna set up the face unlock right now Setting up the face unlock is done and in the settings of this we have this when swiping up on lock screen and I have already added two fingerprints right now let me show you yes there is that double tap to sleep on the status bar works fine and if I tap the fingerprint scanner as you can see it unlocks but while unlocking I have seen it does a little bit of glitchiness just notice okay so there is a slight bit of choppiness while unlocking sometimes but right now it's not happening by the way double tap to wake is working fine again and if you swipe up it will use the face unlock and as you can see it unlocks fine with the face unlock let me show you one more time it will show you recognizing face and there is a black border so it won't have any issues while like you are doing a video calling or something whenever it uses the front camera there is that black border that works perfectly fine here no issues with that by the way just notice how beautiful the always on display looks and yes i definitely like this i mean the lock screen as well even the always on display looks beautiful and of course there is a battery percentage on the bottom and stuff and again the fingerprint scanner speed is fine no problem at all i didn't face any issues whatsoever with the fingerprint scanner on this particular rom it unlocks very fast and in a snappy way no issues whatsoever with that also there is the app lock so to enable that you have to go into advanced then stock lock options and in the app lock settings of course you will see all the apps and you can lock any particular app like the google photos and stuff if you want to lock them you can definitely do that and yes this is how the app lock ui looks like by the way this is a bug and if i just remove it from right here as you can see right now this window is actually appearing fine and in here if you just tap the fingerprint scanner it will unlock that particular app so the app lock is working fine no issues whatsoever and just look at this animations they look just smooth and beautiful And yes, this is how the recent panel looks like. And if you want to go to the split top mode and stuff, the split top mode is also there. They should be working fine. And as you can see, the scaling is working perfectly fine. No problems whatsoever with that. And the scrolling and stuff is working fine again with the split top feature. And if you go home and if you get back to the recent panel, this is how both of these apps stay together. And all the way to the left, you have the clear all. And in the recents, we do have the screenshot and the select option if you're looking for all those. And if you're wondering about Google Photos Unlimited Backup, yes, as you can see, it shows this pixel can backup unlimited Google Photos and videos. So yeah, Google Photos Unlimited Backup patch is there. So again, in terms of daily driving performance and stuff, I haven't had any issues. And even once I'm scrolling in the recent panel, just like this, it gives me a haptic feedback and just feels awesome in the hand, of course, with the haptic feedback and stuff. The haptic feedback on this ROM is just amazing. And yes, here are the N210 Geekbench score with a CPU stress test on this particular build. Almost forgot to mention about the stock camera. And yes, this is the stock camera. It is present in most ROMs nowadays, but some ROMs do not come with this MIUI camera, which I definitely do not like. And yes, the Evolution X ROMs and stuff for the Redmi Note 10 Pro does not have the MIUI camera or the Anix camera by default. Kind of disappointing for me. That's the reason why I don't flash those ROMs because 
I daily drive with my Redmi Note 10 Pro and I definitely need the MIUI camera over here because I can scan the documents and stuff. These modes are really awesome and I can just like point at anything and I can just shoot a document if I really want to. And there's the like 4K 30 FPS videos and stuff. You can shoot pro mode videos in 4K 30 FPS up to if you're noticing and we also have the 1080p 60 fps video shooting option and stuff these makes this miui camera a really like necessity for me at least and with the front camera and stuff you can shoot up to 1080p 30 fps videos no problems with that even the portrait mode is working perfectly fine here so this miui camera mostly is working perfectly fine but of course there is that slow motion bug and the 64 megapixel bug those will force close the miui camera as of right now still except for that the super macro mode and stuff if you are looking for all those they should be working perfectly fine here no issues with the super macro mode at all if you're noticing that it's focusing perfectly fine also the other lenses should be working perfectly great no problems with those so it gets a really huge thumbs up from me because it has the miui camera working perfectly fine and definitely i can say the pixel was gives you a google pixel kind of experience overall in the ui and everywhere it just feels smooth and snappy I definitely like the Pixel OS for the Redmi Note 10 Pro, the latest build of it. Let me know in the comments what do you guys think. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today. I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.